excited about making this video because we're about to install the real eduke32 on linux with a front end if you watch that last video i put up just go ahead and delete all that stuff about eduke32 with all the add-ons i had you install the one from flathub get rid of all that because you're about to install the real eduke32 with a launcher so i was doing some researching on the web and i found this page Let's play in Duke Nukem 3D on Linux. I scroll down this page, I find this script. This is exactly what we need to get the real one going with a launcher. I'm going to show you how to do this right now. This script is almost complete, but not quite. You're going to highlight all this text, right click, and left click copy. Minimize the browser. I want you to go to your scripts folder, right click and go to open in terminal. Type in z duke3d.sh. Right click here, go to paste. And we're going to make a small change here. Go to this line that says cd slash, hit the enter key one more time. Right under that, I want you to type in mkdir eduke32. If you look down here in the script where the make command is, right after he builds the executables, he goes to copy them to a non-existent folder. So that's why you're putting this line in here right after the cd slash command. Now go up here and save your script exit type in chmod plus x duke3d.sh now one more thing I forgot to mention if you notice when it says cd slash that's off the main file system you need administrative rights to be able to do anything to those folders so when you run the script, you're just going to type in sudo first, dot slash duke3d.sh. You enter your password, it's going to do everything for you. First it updates, then it installs all required dependencies, but mine's just going to race through those two parts because I've already done this stuff. Alright, here goes the good stuff. Now it's finally building it. This is actually going to take a few minutes. Oh, you are going to see some errors in the script creation. Let me scroll this back for a second, see if I can look at it. You're going to see this word show up a lot, deprecated. That's because it's using deprecated source code, but it's not really a problem because it's able to correct the issue. I think I'm just going to play a clock ticking sound here to add to the suspense. Okay, finally, it's over. Okay, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. 
Let's test this to see that it works. Is it forward slash? Okay, you didn't see that. Nobody saw that. Okay, there you are. There's your two executables. So you, don't, you really don't need the build folder. I can show you how to remove that. Okay, this is what you're going to want to do. Open the file system, go to file, click open as administrator. Enter your password. Click on file system again. So you want to delete the educ32 build folder because you don't need that any longer. Now just delete only that. It's very easy to screw things up in this mode. I want you to go into this folder and take the two executables. It's the only two files you need. Copy these to your other open window. You're going to make a folder in your games folder where you can run these. Okay, I forgot. I already copied these here. But so that's all you're going to do. Click on paste and copy. Now go back to your other window. Go up one folder to the file system and delete educ32. It doesn't really need to be off the main file system like that. Now close this window out. Okay, you're going to open a you're going to open a terminal in this new folder you made, type in dot slash educ32 and see what happens when you run this. Required game data was not found. A valid copy of Duke 3D GRP or other compatible data is needed to run educ32. Yada yada yada. Okay. I'm going to exit this terminal for a minute. Now this file I had off a very old CD. All I can really tell you is the legit way to get this. What you can do on eBay is just go to price plus shipping lowest first and you'll find the cheapest one they have available. Here you go, $13.89 free shipping. So eBay's got them, Amazon's got them, and you only need that one file, I believe, duke3d.grp. So you want to copy that file into this folder. Scratch that. Go back to your main home folder. Go to dot config. And now you see it created an educ32 folder here. You want to take this file, drop it in that folder. Create a folder called auto load. Now, these files here are from the Duke 3D HRP site, which I put the link in the description for. You can download all these files for free. These are the ones I recommend. The HRP pack, the music, the PlayStation sounds, and the Z pack. You want to drop those in the auto load folder. And when you run this program, it should work fine. Well, I might as well do the part of my video I'm not sure if I'm going to be allowed to keep or not. You just want to type in dot slash educ32 to wherever you copied those executables. I'm going to leave the auto load folder and polymer renderer off so you can look at this old school for a minute. Pixely, no special lighting or anything. Let's drop down. Let's 
get that rocket launcher. Ruby. Uh, look at those stars on the ground. Look how pixelated and crappy those look. Look how pixelated everything looks. Okay, that's enough of that. Now let's run this again. Check the polymer box, check the autoload box. Oh yeah. Wow, it even sounds better. What I like to do, I like to take old games and make them look beautiful. It's going to be a little bit slow because it's caching textures, but it's only the first time. It should load a lot faster after that. that looks look at those pixels can't even see the pixels nice lighting oh gun clip Object models now instead of sprites. Okay, that's enough for now. I just wanted a quick test. That's all you have to do to get Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition working on Linux, but the reason that I haven't decided to put the expansion packs up and make a video about that is because these require conscripts and dev files, and you have to have these complicated batch files to launch them in Windows. I haven't seen yet if some nice person out there has made a Linux script which would be capable of launching these, but if and when they do, and if I'm able to run this in Linux, I'll make a video about the expansions. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.